Hey, and welcome back to Heartbeat Christian Academy. And as you can see, we are still in the prayer studio. So we're continuing our journey on prayer. There is the banking details if you want to partner. And there is the contact details. So we continue today our journey on prayer. As we continue the lectures on prayer, we are at lecture 5. And we're talking about the methods of prayer, part 2. And in this lecture... We're going to be talking about listening to God's voice and we're going to be talking about the importance of corporate prayer. The importance of corporate prayer. There's so many things that we can talk about as we talk about prayer, but I'm sure by now you're blessed and your prayer life is on fire and you are seeing the difference in your life. Prayer makes such a difference. I was doing a study on prayer myself, uh, preparing a message the other day. And I saw in the book of Acts that there are some truths that I'm going to be sharing uh, as we get opportunity through the course. Just one or two truths from the book of Acts as far as prayer is concerned. And this is really going to affect our lives. If you've got the course notes, you can turn to your course notes now. Uh, like I said, this is lecture five. We're talking about uh, listening to God's voice and we're talking about the importance of, of uh, group prayer or corporate prayer. After completing the session, you should be able to be persistent in prayer whilst hearing God's voice and generate corporate prayer. So it's about persistence. And as we start off here, we, we, we say that. We say, learn how to pray uh, through victory without giving up. You know, one of the biggest challenges I believe we have as far as prayer is concerned, we end up in a situation where we stop our prayers. We get discouraged. Uh, we don't want to pray anymore. Sometimes we don't understand why prayer isn't answered instantly and we lose hope. And what we're saying here in this manual is one thing that's important. That is, we have to pray persistently. We have to end up praying persistently. Uh, it says here, persistence is the underlying basic ingredient. That is the ingredient that's going to make your prayer successful. So as we enter into this lecture, we're starting off with listening to God's voice. You know, traditionally, a lot of us believe that prayer is actually one-way communication. It's just you asking God and laying it on God and God has to listen to your prayers and answer you. It's actually two-way communication. You are supposed to develop a hearing ear in prayer. And you might ask me, how does the Lord speak to you? Well, there's many, many ways that the Lord can speak to you. One of the ways is through His Word. A lot of times, as I've prayed, and I've studied the word. All of a sudden, the Lord just quickened the scripture in my heart. I would go to that scripture. I would, I would do it. I would just go study that scripture. Sometimes it's different. It's You get an a inclination of something in your spirit. You hear the Lord say something. And then when you think of considering that or doing it, you have this peace. And this thing that the Lord said obviously has to align with God's word. We have to always taste what we hear. Because there are many, unfortunately, there are many voices. So we need to get to that point where we can hear God. And having a willing attitude, just opening up our hearts, having the right attitude. Even when things aren't moving along as we think it should be moving along. A lot of times we get to a point where, where we think that things aren't moving fast enough. And then we can have quite a, a problem. And if we have an agenda... It talks here about having an ear and it says here that the, the disciples didn't have an ear. What does that mean? Well, what that means is that the disciples were forceful about what they wanted. And many times when it, when it comes to prayer, uh, when it comes to asking God for stuff, we want to dictate to God. Prayer is not instructing God. A lot of times it's, it's actually taking things in petition to God, taking things in in just uh, mentioning uh, aspects to God. Sometimes it's talking to situations, to circumstances. Sometimes it's addressing the powers and the principalities of the air. So there's a lot of different things. But the fact is, through our prayer, we need to maintain a proper attitude. We don't want to run into an attitude problem. And that means that we will have selective hearing. Even when Jesus spoke to his disciples here, uh, he spoke to them, he plainly spoke to them. They could not listen. It says here in Luke 9, they did not understand. It was hidden from them because they were not, they were not tuned in to hear what God says. When, when you pray for something, 
it doesn't mean that you've not told God and this is how it's supposed to happen. A lot of times it means that now you have to open up your heart, open up your ear and listen to what the Lord is saying. Try and hear what the Lord is saying in that moment and then have a hearing heart, have a, a submissive spirit and be obedient to what the Lord says. It's so critically important. Uh, we are motivated then to learn. We are motivated and we have a capacity to understand. Revelation 3, 3 6 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We have to hear what the Spirit is saying. We also have to understand the importance of timing. Even here in Paul's life, there were certain periods when he had to go into certain places. Here it talks about the Holy Spirit forbade Paul to go into Asia at some stage. And what the, what the curriculum says here is harvesting too early or too late both destroys the crop. So we must understand that it's not our timing, it's God's timing. Yes, uh, when we talk about faith, we're saying now. That means that we are receiving it now. It doesn't mean that it is always manifesting in the physical right now. It sometimes means that we're standing. We are watering what we said. We are watering the seeds of our faith constantly until the harvest comes in. But we still have this real submission to God where we are submitting to Him and saying, Lord, Thy will be done on earth as it is in the kingdom. We understand His will by His word, so we're not confused about the word. I'm not talking about confusion. No, we, we, we know what it is, but we must understand that there's sometimes just a time, a time to speak and a time to listen. And what the manual says here that's pretty uh, profound is having uh, or harvesting too early or too late both destroys the crop. So you can have a perfect crop but yet, you know, going for it too early and going for it too late destroys the cop. Why would you say recognizing uh, that God loves you? Well, in my experience, a lot of times when you pray and when you're praying about certain things, certain things might take time. I must be honest with you. I've been on the road a long time. You might have been on the road a long or you might be on the road a long time. So you might also understand some things take time. And what's going to happen is during that time when you're waiting for the harvest, when you're waiting for the answer, a lot of times the enemy is going to come and he's going to bring accusation. He's going to tell you that you're not good enough. He's going to tell you that you're not holy enough. He's going to, he's going to attack you, you and, and he's going to try and get you into legalism where you try and justify yourself and say, well, maybe if I go to church more, maybe if I tithe more. Maybe if I do more for God's work, maybe if I read my Bible more, then the Lord will answer me. We must recognize that uh, the answer to our prayer is not based on our performance. It's based on what Christ did on the cross. And all we have to do is remain in faith. And while we're remaining in faith, while we're trusting the Lord, we are 100% confident of His love. We are 100% uh, confident that we are sons of God the Lord, sons of God, by faith in Christ, that confidence must be there because else the enemy will come in and bring distraction and lies to you. Uh, our Father desires to communicate with us. You can read those scriptures there. And then, like I said earlier on, you have to judge what you, what you hear as the Lord is answering in various ways. It might be somebody coming to you with a word. It might be something in the scripture. It might be a word in your heart. Uh, it might be a door that all of a sudden opens up. But we need to judge what we hear and we need to remain in fellowship and in the word, uh, fellowship with believers, fellowship with God in the word, have a personal relationship with the Lord. And we need to then listen so that we can have a discerning heart as, our, uh, as the Lord starts speaking to us. Then the importance of corporate prayer. Now what I, I read here was in the book of Acts and I'm just going to uh, look here on my Bible uh, and just go off screen there and just look on the Bible here that I have in front of me. Uh, just in Acts chapter 4, it was just interesting for me that the church's response, the early church's response to problems has always been corporate prayer. It's always been unity. It's always been coming together. But today, the church has a lot of ideas. When things go wrong, when we face trouble, uh, we negotiate with government. We, we, we go and we have uh, uh, marches down the street. And I'm not saying any of those things in themselves are wrong. But it, once we've prayed as a church, once we've come together as the body of Christ and we've prayed, then we can hear what to do. The Lord will then endure us with power 
uh, by the Holy Spirit so that we can actually then take the action that we're supposed to take. But we cannot uh, work in the natural and have a humanistic approach to the problems that we're facing as in society. The first occurrence that I just want to mention is in Acts chapter 4. Here the disciples are, are, are taken in front of the re religious leaders and they told, if you speak in, in this name, you are going to die. And they are threatened with their life. So what do they do upon this threat? Do they leave the city? Do they run away? Do they go to the union? Do they go to the political parties? Do they go to the religious authorities? Do they go into debates? Do they go and discuss? No, it says here in, in Acts 4 verse 24. So when they heard that, they raised their voices to God with one accord. So they went into corporate prayer when the crisis came. And what was, you know, what, what was the result here in the final verse, in, in verse 31? And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled uh, together was shaken and they were filled with the Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. So the result was they, they continued to speak the word. They didn't listen to these guys. They understood that they were supposed to suffer persecution and they were supposed to do what the Lord said. But this was discovered in corporate prayer. And uh, another thing that really struck my heart here was they were assembled in one accord. They lift their voices in one accord and they prayed and the place was shaken. So a physical manifestation took place. Wow, what a wonderful thought that is. And then also they were filled with the Holy Spirit. Now that didn't, that we know these men were filled with the Spirit. But this is what, what is spoken about when it says be continually filled with the Spirit. And corporate prayer, the corporate anointing uh, gives that opportunity for us to be filled with the Spirit, to be full of God, to be endured with power. What was the result? The result was they spoke the word with great boldness. Again, yeah, we see where Peter was put in prison and Herod was murdering the church. So what, what did the church do in Acts chapter 12 verse 12? It says, so when they had considered this, they came together in the house of Mary, the mother of John. And it says here, yeah, they came together and they prayed when they considered this. And what was the, the, the result? Well, the angel led Peter out of prison. And when he arrived at this prayer meeting, uh, they were shocked. They they didn't, the, the servant that went, uh, they, 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 she said, Peter's in front of the house. And they said, no, it must be his ghost. You, you, you're dreaming. It can't be. But they were praying for it. So what was their response again when adversity came, when persecution came, when problems came? I wanted to share that with you. Uh, that's not in the curriculum, but I wanted to share that with you because a lot of times we think that corporate prayer meetings are a waste of time. And a lot of us, because of disappointment, uh, many of us, because we've actually... We're not sure of the love of God. We're not sure of the grace of God. We're unsure about a lot of things. So we sit in a situation where we've lost a lot of faith in our corporate prayer meetings. We don't believe in it anymore. And also th there's been a lot of proof proving in the corporate meetings. A lot of people have come there to prove themselves, to shout the loudest, to talk the most elaborate tongues. None of those things are wrong. But if the motive is wrong, if we're not in one accord, if we are in that corporate meeting, we get together and there's 10 of us and all of us try to prove each other. They try to prove themselves to each other. They try to be the, the, the best and that sort of thing. You know, the Lord knows our heart uh, and that's why there's no power. There's very little power in prayer meetings these days. And like I said initially, I know a lot of people that pray a lot, but they're not very effective in their prayer. Their prayers are, are not really yielding the results uh, because I believe that a lot of people are praying wrong and they're praying with the wrong motive. So we need to look at that as we go through the lecture. And this is the importance of, of prayer and the corporate prayer. It says here, uh, this scripture in Matthew 18, 18, verse 18 to 20, it says, If two of you agree on earth concerning anything they ask, it will be done for them by the Father. There's this prayer of agreement. Uh, uh, Leviticus 26, 8 says, Five of you shall chase a hundred, and a hundred of you shall put ten thousand to flight. It's awesome. There's, there's this promise that if we, uh, if we agree, if we can get into agreement, it's, it's not only that the devil will, will uh, run from us, but by, by this the world will also know that we are his disciples. We see that. I mean, prayer is instructed as we've read throughout this course so many uh, times that prayer is instructed, instructed throughout God's word. It is something that the, the Lord has given us. I mean, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 
uh, verse 16 says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And it says, um, without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. You must pray without ceasing. Even Philippians 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known. The Lord is, is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but in everything. By prayer and supplication and thanksgiving. Let your request be made known to God. Now Paul is talking corporately. He's saying to these guys. You must come together. And you must pray. And in everything you must do it. Uh, Elijah stood alone. It was a problem. And we also talk about, about, about unbelief. And a lot of times uh, we, we see how Jesus could not do miracles where he was. Uh, in his town because of the unbelief. The unbelief stops uh, the, the results. Unbelief is danger, dangerous. Unbelief cuts us off from the vine. We, we cannot be connected to the source if we've lost faith. Uh, we're cutting ourselves off the, the source, the power source that we have, which is Christ. You see, the devil is trying to deceive us all the time, trying to tell us it's not real, trying to tell us that God's not for us, trying to tell us certain things and we need to be very very careful and very wise in our interpretation of our circumstances when we look at our circumstances when we look at our situations we need to understand that God is for us who can be against us we must not allow the enemy to steal kill and destroy in our lives and especially when the enemy comes and he accuses the Lord and says ah the Lord doesn't want to give it to you You, you're not good enough or when there's when there's this problem of unbelief where Certain things bring unbelief in our in our lives. A lot of times, um, the other day, the Lord spoke to me about the seed of disappointment, which is a form of unbelief. We get disappointed and then we enter into unbelief. It's so, so dangerous and we need to be very careful. Faith draws power from God. Uh, faith raises the dead. Uh, corporate prayer is important, especially in binding forces of darkness. So as the church... We have a, a responsibility as the church of Jesus Christ. We cannot get away from that responsibility. If we don't listen to what the Lord is saying as the church of Jesus Christ and come together, there will be no power. The body has to work in unity. The body has to work in unison. And this is the only way for us to go forward in our lives. This is the only way for us to experience God's power. And I trust that, that this has been informative and a blessing to you. And I trust that you will understand that you need to work this unity. Yes, as the Holy Spirit reveals Himself to people, we will see more and more power in the church. Uh, move into the reality uh, the, uh, of the promises of God, being persistent, praying with faith, faith, praying with thanksgiving. We are instructed to do this, hearing God's voice, approaching Him correctly, relaxing in His love, judging by the Word generating group prayer, encouraging the body of Christ, uh, synergistically getting results. The results that we want is in corporate prayer. The Lord called the body and He wants us as the body to get together and to pray. Uh, I thank you for watching lecture 5 and I'll see you in lecture 6 as we talk about the foundations or the foundation for success in prayer. God bless you.